Hello everyone, my name is Shane, and in this box is the new 2025 edition of the Surface Pro 11. The 2024 edition has been out for seven months now, but after giving this one a proper chance after several months of use, I was unable to do everything I wanted to do on this with it running a Snapdragon processor. We now have on this 2025 updated version an Intel Lunar Lake processor packed into this, so I'm super excited to check this out. The model I have here comes packed with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. There's a bunch of configurations at different price points. The highest you can go on this is 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. So let's see what we get in the box. On top, have our device. Put this to the side for a second, see what else we get. We have a little bit of paperwork. This comes with the same 39 watt charger that came with the Snapdragon version of this and our outlet for the wall that plugs into the charger. Let's go ahead and check out the star of the show here, the Surface Pro 11 2025 edition. Now physically, this is gonna be very similar to the 2024 edition. Really the only difference we're gonna have on this 2025 on the outside is we actually now have an anti-reflective display on this one. I noticed over the months using this 2024 version that it is just super reflective. It can be a straight up mirror sometimes, whereas it looks a lot more toned down on this 2025. So really excited about the anti-reflective. While this boots up, let's take a physical tour. On the left side, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. On the top, we have our power button and volume rockers. On the right, we have our proprietary proprietary surface connector. Of course, we have our kickstand on the back here, ton of versatility with this. We also have our little magnetic door down here to access our SSD. You can go ahead and upgrade this if you want to. We also have our 10 megapixel camera on the back. This can film in up to 4K resolution. We also have our ultra wide front facing camera. This one can film in up to 1440p. But I'm gonna go ahead, put my information in this, set it up, use it for the day. And I'll come back with my final first impressions on the Surface Pro 11 2025 edition. All right, so it's been about a week now since I first started using this Surface Pro 11 with the Intel Lunar Lake processor. I'm definitely ready to share some of my first impressions with you guys. Starting with the biometrics, getting into the tablet, we just have face recognition on this. It gets you in very quickly. I found it works at a lot of different angles, so I'll do it farther away now. So at arm's length, that's still unlocked. So very good range on this and gets you in very quickly. And once you're in, you'll be greeted by the 13 inch display. This has a 2880 by 1920 resolution. Text looks more crisp on this Surface Pro 11 compared to the brand new Surface Laptop 7 for a point of comparison. We have a very nice three by two aspect ratio here. So even though we have just the 13 inch size on this, it does feel like enough screen real estate for me and my needs. And this is also an OLED display. So I've been really liking the colors on this OLED. It's the first time we've got it on this Surface Pro 11 compared to all the previous Surface Pros. We also have a maximum brightness of 600 nits on this, which I have found to definitely be enough for me and in my bright office environments. And there's also an anti-reflective coating on this, which actually has been noticeable for me. Something that always caught my eye on this older Surface Pro 11 is that the screen is very reflective. It was very distracting in a lot of my everyday use cases. So this is on maximum brightness. You can see my studio lighting there in the middle, how bright that is on my studio light. Compare that to this anti-reflective one. That light is not nearly as bright as it was in reflective as on that other Surface Pro 11. So this has been noticeable and appreciated for me in my first week of use so far. One other minor difference I did find on this newer Surface Pro 11 with the Intel chip is that it actually is 10 grams lighter. So 10 grams of lighter weight actually is noticeable when you are holding this larger tablet in the hands. Using this as a tablet has been a very enjoyable experience because we have such a great display on this in a pretty thin form factor and with a process that isn't overheating and making the fans kick up all the time. This has been a very efficient device. And then this also has a really nice keyboard attachment to go with it. So this is the Surface Flex keyboard. It's been out since the original Surface Pro 11, but still works exactly the same with this version. It is a very expensive keyboard. I think it retailed for $350. It has been more discounted nowadays to about $250 or so. Regardless of the price you pay, this is one of the best keyboard folios I've used for any tablet to date. We have a very nice trackpad on this. I know it's not the biggest trackpad out there, so it might not look impressive on video, but the feel of this one has by far been the best for me of any trackpad I've ever used.
it sounds like such a minor thing to be excited about, but it just makes the overall experience really nice and premium feeling. We also have a very good keyboard setup on this. We have very good key travel on these keys. There is what I would say good enough keyboard backlighting on these. Not super bright, but we have three different modes here. This lowest mode is barely visible. And then we have a middle option and I usually just use it on the brightest all the time. I would say it's good enough. The backlighting on these isn't super bright, but it's definitely enough and has a nice enough look to it. And the highlight feature of the Flex Keyboard definitely has to do with it being now wireless. I can go ahead and still use the keyboard here. So, so I can type on it, do whatever I wanna do on it. So nice to have this detached. So we do have a built-in battery to the keyboard case now. It is maybe slightly heavier, slightly thicker, but not all that different from the previous generations. We still have the same really nice microfiber outside on this. And a nice little touch is that when you can roll this over, you then have a little bit of an elevated raised up keyboard towards you when you're typing, which is super nice. It is a very nice keyboard setup to go alongside this. What's also nice with this keyboard is that you don't have to detach it all the time. You can just flip it around and none of your inputs are gonna show up from the keyboard on the back. See, I have a note here, still have the keyboard plugged in. Can type a bunch of stuff on the back, not getting any inputs here. Or if I go up and touch that trackpad, there's no inputs going on. And like I mentioned before, we have a very slim package here. So there's been a lot of times I found where I just wrap around the keyboard, continue to carry this around with me. And then there's the Surface Slim Pen 2 to go alongside all this as well. This is still the same Slim Pen that Microsoft has been offering since 2021. So still works here with this one. And I have really enjoyed the pen input with this so far. We have a nice smooth writing experience here. We have some haptic feedback inside the pen as you're writing. We of course have the eraser tip on this so super easy to just go ahead and erase you can press the button on the top to activate things using this in excel has been very enjoyable so just a lot of good use cases for the surface pen to go alongside the surface pro but now getting into what is really different now with this new surface pro 11 compared to the one that came out seven months ago it is the new processor that is inside this tablet this now comes with the intel lunar lake processor and all these different processors can be very confusing these days so i'm going to leave on screen the four models that are these intel lunar lake processors regardless of which of these you end up with. Overall, you are getting better performance in addition to far better efficiency on these Lunar Lake processors compared to some of the older Surface Pros with Intel chips. In addition to better performance than what we had on the Snapdragon X Elite version of this Surface Pro 11 that came out a few months ago. Now, the first thing that shocked me with this Intel Lunar Lake Surface Pro is that just in your lighter general use cases, having just a lot of tabs open, doing a lot of different things, having just a a lot of applications open at once. When doing any lighter tasks on this, this is a completely silent device. It's also cool to the touch. It's not heating up a lot like those previous Intel Surface Pros. And then in addition to running cooler and running more efficiently, we also have improved performance on this, which has been greatly appreciated in my first week of use. I am finding noticeable performance differences, starting with the previous Surface Pro 11 with the X Elite processor. So I did a lot of side-by-side -side testing in RuneScape to show Show you that in my personal use case playing this game i am only able to get at most 80 to 90 frames per second out of this which does sound nice on paper but it's been a generally choppy experience for me the gameplay is not super smooth which is what i'm looking for whereas now on the intel model in the same exact scenarios showing these side by side i am getting a smooth 120 frames per second on this intel which has been way smoother and a much more enjoyable experience for me. And as I've been explaining, it's not just the better performance, it's the better efficiency as well. So now if I compare this Intel to my Surface Pro 9 Intel, this has an Intel i5 in it, I am also able to get pretty close to 100 frames per second on this lower spec processor. But since this has just the Intel Iris graphics inside of this, this is again a much weaker GPU doing the same exact thing on both computers at the same time. This is completely maxing out the GPU on the Intel Iris and on the Surface Pro 11, I can get a smooth 120 frames while only using about 50 to 60% of the GPU and the tablet isn't giving out much fan noise at all compared to the Surface Pro 9. I'll do a sound comparison.
which that just has summarized my experience with all the previous Surface Pros over the years. Whenever I want to do something more demanding on these devices, it kicks up like crazy. Now that's not to say that this Intel version of the Surface Pro 11 doesn't heat up and doesn't give out a lot of fan noise. It still has fan noise, but when running on the best performance mode and pushing this device to as far as I would push it, which is using 100% of the available GPU and about 30% of the available CPU, this is what it sounds like at the maximum fan levels. And like I said before, that good performance also comes with good battery life initially. In a full day of lighter use using the power efficient mode, on this I was able to get 7 hours of screen on time. This was with high display brightness in addition to the 120Hz refresh rate on. And if I compare this to the Snapdragon X Elite version of the Surface Pro, since this is what this thing was hyped up the most for, the more efficient battery life, I got 7 hours and 45 minutes of screen time. So it's not really much of a drastic difference to go to this Intel one, you lose 45 minutes of battery life compared to that other very battery efficient device in exchange for getting noticeably better performance. Now, if you're going to be pushing this tablet more, you get less battery life. So in a mixed use case of doing some of those gaming tests, in addition to a mix of those light use cases, using the best performance mode preset on this, I got four hours of screen time. So when you are pushing this more, that's when you are going to see some battery drops and if you bring back the Snapdragon X Elite into the comparison, when doing heavier tasks on this, the battery consumption was definitely less for me, but again, you weren't really able to push it to its full 100% if you even wanted to. For me, this just felt like a pretty limited device, which when you're spending this much money on one of these, you don't really want it to be limited at all. And in one of my heaviest use cases, again, running RuneScape at the full 120 frames per second, maxing out the GPU at 100% and the CPU at about 30%, on the best performance mode, I got two hours of screen on time, which doesn't sound like a lot, but again, if you compare this to previous Surface Pros, in the past, a lot of times, I would only get one hour of battery life out of playing that game, so getting near two hours on this one now is a noticeable improvement. Now, as far as charging this back up, the included 39-watt charger in the box honestly doesn't do a great job of charging this up quickly. I guess I'm appreciative that there is a charger in the box still, but you can definitely charge this up faster in other ways. So after two hours of charging, Charging with the 39 watt charger, I still was not back to a full 100%, so this is a pretty long time. So I found it better to just use a Type C charger. I'm using the 100 watt power brick that came along the Microsoft USB 4 dock. This is just its own power brick. I can plug this right into the Surface Pro, and when using that 100 watt charger, I'm getting a much faster top up. So you can charge this tablet quickly, you just will need a different charger compared to what's offered in the box. 1440p 30 there's no 60 frames options on this which is kind of odd but we do have really good image resolution here for a tablet and running on windows we also have 4k 30 on the rear facing camera so actually some pretty nice cameras on this tablet and because this is a pretty portable device you can actually use the cameras decently on this i'm definitely happy with the cameras on this speakers are also good on this we have a dual speaker setup on this and in my initial testing the speakers aren't as good as what we have on the new surface laptop 7 this has a really nice speaker system in it this also got the intel lunar lake upgrade so i'll have a video out on this soon but i would say the speakers on this are better than my new galaxy book 5 pro this also has that new intel lunar lake processor so even though they're not the best speakers out there on the market definitely impressive for this tablet form factor but overall first impressions i've been really impressed with the new surface pro 11 intel initially we have the same great Surface Pro experience here with just an excellent form factor with the kickstand, the keyboard attachment, the Surface Pen, a very good OLED display on this, getting some much needed improved graphics performance on this, whereas I can play my games smoothly and comfortably on this tablet PC form factor without a ton of fan noise and being overall relatively efficient. There have been so many times in the past that my fans are just kicking on my Surface Pros when I'm not even doing anything, whereas in my light use cases on this, the device is completely silent and cool to the touch. Really the only complaint I have with this device initially is the price tag. Service devices have always been expensive, that's always been the case, but with these Intel Lunar Lake models specifically, for some reason these came out retail price $400 more expensive 
than the Snapdragon version of the same exact device. For this adequately specced Surface Pro 11 with the Intel, this has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. This was $1,900 retail. Whereas this same Surface Pro 11 with the OLED display, these are the same specs that I have in my Snapdragon version of this. This one started at $1,500, not $1,900. So at least at the time of making this video close to the launch of this device, this is a very high premium to pay for this very specific device. But in my initial testing over the past week, this is definitely the best Surface Pro I have ever used. We have the most, what I would say is just complete package here, considering tablet usage, laptop usage with the new Flex keyboard. There is still a lot of appeal to this device for me personally, because it is such a compact form factor that I find myself taking everywhere with me. I love to take this on work trips when I don't need a full fat laptop. We have a very very slim package here and it's just super easy to jump into this device at a moment's notice. This has been a great display that has been well enough in a lot of my bright environments I use this in. But I'll be curious to hear your thoughts on the new Surface Pro 11 in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give a like on your way out. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.